Hello, guys. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, we will have our second cooking class, and it will be hosted by your colleagues, Gayatri and Kevin. Okay, they will show uh, how to cook dishes from Indonesia and India. I hope you guys enjoy. So, you guys can start. Hi, everyone. I'll be first. Okay, we can see your your kitchen. Mm -hmm. This is on a stand, so yeah, it will be a still one. Okay, so we're gonna make actually two things today, an entree and a main, and dessert will be followed up by Gayachi, so it's gonna be a full course meal today. That would be great. So, okay, I'm gonna make two dishes. One was um, the one that Leon said as a vegan, I forgot what I said, but we're gonna make ba one or bala bala in some places, which is basically a deep fried vegetables with like a batter. So first we're gonna make the batter. It's quite simple actually. We're gonna have like eight tablespoons of flour. This is a clean spoon. Some people may say it's an Italian tablespoon or an Asian one. We're gonna have like eight tablespoons of flour, which is like three, four, five. You know, I'm gonna make it like six. six. Okay, so we're gonna have our six tablespoons of flour. Okay. So here we have like six tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna add a bit of water. We just wanted to make a loose batter, just a tiny bit looser than a pancake batter, but not too loose because we want to incorporate everything. So yeah, definitely more water. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is batter. We're just gonna batter up. Just trying to incorporate everything. Mm -hmm. Once it's incorporated, I mean, Indonesia, there's Indonesia, there's a lot of Indonesian definitely in the chat. So if you want to remember what this is, this food is. Originated from China because of this of its name, but one, but itself it's known for being meat. But this is all vegetarian because there used to be actually meat here. Specifically, if I'm not mistaken, it's chicken and shrimp. It used to be here. Okay, so we have this batter. We still can do a figure eight. This batter probably too loose, but I can't add more flour. Wait, okay. Besides that, we're also gonna add a bit of baking powder. Or baking soda. This is what I have. And we're gonna season this. Season wisely, because most of the time people do make this and eventually it becomes too becomes too salty. We have their salt and some um, seasoning powder. In this case I have mushroom seasoning. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, before you, you continue, can you please just introduce yourself and tell oh, where okay. you're from and that, why you are doing <laughs> why uh, the name of your dishes and why you are cooking it? Okay, so I going back here. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin. I'm 17 years old. I am from Indonesia. Um, one thing, one of the things I actually enjoy doing at home is cooking. I do most of the time make my own breakfast before I go before I do online school. Sometimes make uh, make lunch mainly for myself because my palate and my family's palate is quite different. So yeah, and the reason why I want to show the cook is because nah, my Indonesians all we have um, Indonesians really not 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 that I'm not sure it's known for its food. Although we did get an award for like the best food in the world once, but yeah, it's more on introducing the world of the Indonesian food to the world. By starting with the things we can cook at home with the ingredients we already have in our back in our pantry, for example. So yeah, we're gonna use basic ingredients to make Indonesian okay. food. And how do you how do we pronounce your food? The your food, dish? The, first, the entree one is actually called back one. Back, back, like how you pronounce back, but really quick, back. Okay. No, no, back. No, it's like back one. Okay. The one sounds like one. 
the, the, the plant one, I'm not really sure. Or we can just simply call it Bala Bala. You know, okay. it's like Bala Bala Bala. Like the song, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so yeah, this is the first dish. I'll explain the second one when we, when we start it. So, now preheat the oil. We want to make it high. Afterwards, there is some cabbage that goes into the batter. That's probably about a quarter of a whole head of lettuce or of cabbage. And as well as julienne carrots. Prepare this beforehand so we do not need to do the cutting and chopping. I ask my mom's up. Yes. I am not really good at my life skills, so that is probably why. What's the use? So, yeah, we're just going to wait for the oil to, to like not. I may have made the batter wrong, but yeah, we'll see. So yeah, mm -hmm. we're just gonna preheat the oil until it's done. Once it's hot enough, we can chuck it via a spoon. Probably not the best way. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna continue mixing it. Okay, you know what? Let's wait. While waiting for this, let's start with the second one, with explanation of the second one. The second one is in nasi go, right? Which actually came from Indonesia in around the tenth in the tenth century from China. Um, as you can see, I'm Chinese Indonesian, and most of the Indonesians this dish are influenced from other countries. We were colonized by the Netherlands and Japanese, um, as well as the Chinese migrant, the Chinese migration here. So yeah, most Indonesians are mixed, uh, native Indonesians. So. Not the way itself came from China, but Indonesia has turned it with their own twist by using this sweet soy sauce, or in Indonesia we call it ketchup manis. The ketchup is C K E C A P, and the manis is basically how Dr. Baumanis spells her name, the back name. So quite interesting. Okay, so the oil is hot enough. Now we're gonna throw in the vegetable and the batter. The batter is vegetable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna make two at a time because the pan size is different. Now this is usually just sold in the stands beside the streets as like balls with also fried tempeh because most of the food in Indonesia are also fried. So here we have five vegetables. Okay. Now we're just gonna wait for this. Oh. Sorry, there's a question. Um, what vegetables did you add? Oh, I added cabbage and carrots. But you can actually you can virtually add anything to this, technically. You want lettuce, you can add it. It's based on preference, but yeah, most of the, the most common two vegetables are carrots and cabbage. The ratio usually goes for a quarter of a cabbage and two carrots. So yeah, we're just gonna wait for this to cook. I'm just gonna make two for now. So just in case you don't have enough time. Get a plate to plate it up. Um, how long do you usually cook them for? Is it like a specific time or just when? Uh, it's usually cooking? until it's golden brown because the batter itself is quite loose, so it doesn't really that take that long. And the cabbage itself, yeah, it, it it cooks quite quickly, so it doesn't. You want it until it's golden brown. Usually until it's cooked. Oh, okay. My pan, my pan is too shallow, so it doesn't. It's not gonna go golden. Yeah, you can smell the smell, the scent of fried vegetables. Oh gosh, we don't stick. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the last one. Let me just flip this impatiently. 
you want to be patient with this because especially it's dough, it's fried dough, so it, it still might stick to the bottom of the pan, especially if your batter is loose like mine just now. And if it's not really that, if your pan is really on the non-stick, so okay. Just gonna lower the heat for this one. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another question here. Is it deep fried or shallow fried? Um, it's supposed to be deep fried. It depends on what you have. It's norm. It's normally okay. deep fried though. You wanted to cover it, so but yeah, I don't, I don't think I have enough oil, and I'm not there to use too much oil. My mom will be mad. So it depends on what you have, but it is normally deep fried. If you're asking how it's normally done. Yeah, again, it's Indonesian food. We usually just cook with what we have, so it doesn't really matter. It usually is, it, it, its normal shape is in a pot or in a box. Once again, depend, depends on where you have it. Because, yeah. Usually if it's in a pot, you shallow fry it. If it's in a ball, it's deep fried. So yeah, first like pancakes, the first one is definitely broken. I have one nice one and a lovely one. Does not matter because it tastes the same and we're gonna eat it in the mouth. We're gonna put it in a in our mouth. Yeah, I guess this, this only needs to go a little way and we're just gonna strain it and we're gonna put it in the plate. So now I'm gonna switch pans and let's start with the second. Now for me, we are going to make Indonesian fried rice. So we're gonna make a spice then first. So here we have three three garlics. How many? Oh, so we have three garlics, three 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 cloves of garlic, and about six pieces of shallots. But Indonesian shallots are small, like Asian shallots. It's not really as big as American. One piece of candle nut, which can also be substituted for um, one macadamia nut or half a cashew, and chili as per preference. Okay, so we're gonna chuck it in to our spice blender. No, you do not want to touch this with your eyes because I did that during the practice and my eyes hurts. Kevin, is there any particular type of chili that you're using or is it just like a bird's eye? I'm using bird's eye chili, but okay. I know bird's eye chili will be expensive, like especially if you're in America. So yeah, usually if people make this in America, they use Thai green chili because it's cheaper and it's more readily available. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen people make this in America and yeah, they say it's quite hard to find. So I'm gonna blend it. I'm not gonna add any oil because it's, my blender is broken. Okay, what the heck is happening? Wait, sorry. Oh gosh. Four minutes, sorry. Well, okay, I'm going to remove the candle up first. So, yeah, I'm going to improvise some things. Like that. So I did remove the candle up because it won't blend, so I'm going to put it back in. Oh my gosh, it smells like By all means necessary, do not touch your eye once you put this in. Especially because you mix the chilies and the... So I'm just going to use a knife. We're just going to blend it even more. In Indonesia, we call this bumbu halus, which is which is just basically okay. So we can done. We're just gonna lift this up, and I'm just gonna put it in the plate. So you want to come to its golden brown for this? Yeah, I might have gone over. 
I'm going to close this. Okay. So the function of the dependence up here is actually to give it a creaminess, which I'm not really sure you want in the fried rice, but it's going in. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to start heating up the pan. We want oil. Here's so Kevin said any particular type of pan that he used in specific, like do you use a wok or do you use a regular nonstick? Um, pan? Once again, it depends on what you have, but I do not have a wok. Okay. Because the last, the last wok broke, so I'm just using a saucepan, like a pan. Anything will work necessarily. I mean, I tried making fried nasi goreng with the IKEA metal pan, so that works. But if it, it is, um, it's better for us to use a, a gas burner. The pan really doesn't, I don't really think the pan affects as much. Uncle Roger might uh, say no, but yeah, I don't really think the pan matters as long as you have a fire burner. Because the flavor, the, the flavor here comes actually from the burner itself because you want it to be smoky and you want to, the, um, although people say wok hay, which means like the breath of the wok, we don't really use that term in Indonesia. Probably in Malaysia or like Singapore, they use wok hay, that's the term from wok hay. Okay, that's nearly done. Okay. When, when the egg is nearly done, we're going to throw in the spice blend. I'm going to try it all, but I'm going to try removing the, the giant piece of candle nut that didn't get chopped. Okay, here we are. We're going to cook the spice. Kevin, um, you have a question in the chat section. So what do you think about people um, who only have electric stoves? Do you think it's the same? Uh, it's, it's going to be different, but yeah. Uh, people have suggested that, uh, I've done research about this, like I've watched Uncle Roger videos a lot, so people yeah, yeah, yeah. suggest toast the, you toast the rice first if you do not have a gas burning. Yeah, I, I have seen those too, yeah, I agree. Yeah, or you can actually, there's actually like, a wok that is for a uh, wok that is used for electric pans. Oh, wow. I'm adding a bit of more oil. This is too dry. Now we're just gonna cook off the the the, the spices, so don't have like a raw flavor. So yeah. If any of you have questions, you might want to ask yourself. So is this like a comfort food for you or do you have- This is comfort food. People do eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, okay. As in parents cook this for breakfast for the kids. Uh, you can find it in, uh, in most like restaurants for lunch. And then food vendors usually uh, walk around our houses at night selling these things. So yeah, this is quite comfort. Okay, so it's already, Sorry, going out. Now we have day old rice that I'm gonna crumble in. So yeah, it's the reason why you need it to be day old, because if not, it's not gonna it's not gonna flake off easily. And normally, because I'm eating this for myself, I'm using my hands, but normally you would use a spoon. It's faster to use your hands. It's also more messy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. Mm -hmm. Now we did put some spices in, but we have not put all the spices in yet. The flavor is not still done yet. The flavor building is still not done yet. There's still several more items you need to put in to make it Indonesian. I'm gonna reduce the heat down because I think it's spinning. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna put in some, oh, I have not put actually salt in here. So no. I'm gonna put seasoning powder, yet again, stock powder. Use what you have. I'm using a mushroom since I have it. People generally use um, 
Indonesia is called Matoiko. I'm not sure what, what other countries it's called. I've definitely seen it in, a, in English. It's the one with the, it's the red packaging with the red leaf, with a green leaf. Oh, and the most important thing of this fish. Okay, this is the wrong bottle. Yeah. So, Kevin, how important do you think it is to like break up the clumps of rice? Yeah, we use the wok. It's, we use the spoon. It's usually just you press down on it. It's usually gonna break. Or it's usually break. It's actually usually broken beforehand. So yeah, I was just not baking it with my hands. Okay. So we have here the sweet soy sauce, the katapanis. See my little brother used to eat food this morning. What sauce well, uh, is sweet soy sauce? Oh, okay, okay. And um, so, what would you recommend as a substitute for ketchup manis? Because some people don't have ketchup manis. Ketchup, I don't. I'm not really sure on what you can substitute with it with. But I think people have tried using molasses. I'm not really sure what molasses is. Because yeah. The thing, the thing with this, it gives sweetness and smokiness. Okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe sweet barbecue, but it's it's good. It's definitely giving you a different different flavor profile, which doesn't really bother because it's what you like. I guess like Indonesians usually use uh, sweet soy sauce, which actually we uh, especially if you're in the states or in a country where it's, where Asian grocery market are thing, ketchup might will be found easily in there. So yeah. Not really sure what Katamani is, so it can be substituted us because it's a regional. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, see, usually if you add a bit of moisture like sauce, the clumps of rice will naturally disappear. Mm -hmm. And to make this even more special, we're gonna add this is the, this is the reason why it's called Nasi Goreng Ikan Tari. Uh, yeah, Nasi Goreng Tari Medan. That's because here we have, I'm going to put in um, baby anchovies from Medan, salted baby anchovies. And that is why I said I'm not going to add salt because they are, they are already salty, so the salt is going to come from there. If you don't have baby anchovies, it doesn't really matter. You can use chicken, but you might want to put the chicken while you cook the eggs. Yeah, I think, yeah, after I put the baby anchovy, I'm just going to put it on a plate. So do you recommend any other um, protein apart from chicken, like any seafood? Oh, you can put sausage, but in, um, okay, wait. Yeah, but it's, in Indonesia, it's like usually chicken, sausages, goat, because like of the Indian influence as well. But one, one protein you will see rarely put in nasi goreng in Indonesia, is pork. Indonesia is, Indonesia is the biggest Muslim population in the world. So yeah, you can expect to see less, no pork, unless you're in Bali or in, in somewhere. Because Bali is a Hindu have, Hindu haven, and other places are like mainly Christians. So yeah, you will rarely see pork because of the Muslim population, but I would love to see like probably. Bit of, um, like vegan huh? or vegetarian. What about any vegan or vegetarian friendly alternatives? Like, do you use um, We, um, I'm not really sure, but I tried it, but yeah. Um, do not use like wet tofu. If you want to use tofu as a replacement, you want to deep fry it first because the moisture is going to kill the fried rice. Yeah. So like you chopped it into bite size pieces and deep fry it first to dry it out. And then you put it in the fried rice. Or you can simply not even uh, you can simply eat it with just egg. It's the, the normal way is with egg only. So it, yeah, it's it's vegetarian. To make it vegetarian, it's simple. Don't need uh, you just need to put the egg. If you make it vegetarian, it's vegan, it's gonna be harder one. Yeah. So yeah, this is done. I'm just gonna put it in a plate now. You might have seen this in many Asian restaurants. We put it in a bowl. Actually, if we do, I think I, I think I, I do still have five. 
I'm going to activate it in front of you. The Indonesian way. So I'm going to actually find something else just to make sure it's, it looks Indonesian. It looks classically Indonesian. So I'm going to switch burners again. <coughs> Uh-huh, something special. Where is it, Bob? So we have dried rice crackers. Uh, Indonesian is called kerupuk. I'm not really sure if you can find it in other places. Even this is bought from a supermarket, uh, bought from a specialty, a specialty place. It's basically just dried rice, like rice paste that is dried. And it's like garlic flavored, so when you go when you throw it in, it's gonna pop up. Asian grocery stores probably is gonna have this. See if it pops. Nope, not yet. I'm sorry, did you say they were made from rice? Did I hear you correctly or my imagining? What? Did you say they made from rice or my hearing thing? Yeah, this is made from rice. Okay, cool. I mean, at least I've seen them made from rice. So yeah, this is this is definitely from rice because this one is garlic flavored. So it can actually be just from garlic. Oh no, it's from it's from flour. It's flour based. Sorry, some of them are made from rice, but this one is special. This one specifically is made from um, tapioca flour and garlic. Let me just check the ingredients. Yeah, I've, I've only known this as like made from rice, but this one is from tapioca. It's from flour. So it's, it's a paste that is, um, uh, it's mixed with water and it's dried to make it like a sheet. So yeah, okay, so it feels like it's already cooked. It's already hot enough. Okay, no, not for me, it's not hot enough. Wow. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna throw this one, it's, it's hard. So this one's okay. Where this one will be at the right temperature that it immediately pops up when you put it in. And so then, then we will know that the oil is not to make this. Because you do not want the oil to be, do you do not want it to be long, too long that it's going to be like dry. Because you do not want this to have like, you don't want to have like hard pieces in the middle. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I can start to throw many at, at the same time now. You know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be hot, so you might want to be aware. This is so yeah. These were these were normally paced and then it was dried. If you if you are fans of watching like Master Chef Australia, just made a version of this. They never showed us how to make it. Just made it up. I don't remember. Huh? So yeah, I think that's it. So, mm -hmm. so here we have. I'm just gonna move the camera sideways. Here we have some nasi goreng with some bala bala or back one and with fried veg, uh, fried crackers. That looks really good. Not gonna lie. <laughs> what? Sorry. I was saying that looks really good. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's amazing. So wait, Kevin, could you just let, hold it up once again so that I can just click a photo of you? With Got it. Thanks. Congrats, Kevin. Thank you very much. And now I believe it's time for dessert. If I'm not mistaken. Hello, everyone. Am I visible? Rafael, if you could just like spotlight that, that would be great. Wait, I will. Can you do it for me, Leon? I actually. Yeah, sure. It's kind of hard to hear. Thank you. Hello, Gayatri. Now we can see you. Hello. 
I'm Gayatri, I'm 17 years old and uh, I'm from India. Today I'm going to make uh, halwa, which is a famous sweet dish in India. It's uh, prepared all over India and where I belong to, it's known as uh, prasad, which is also called as a blessed food and it's offered to God. So uh, it's a lovely dish. Um, in India, there are so many sweet dishes, but this is the most common thing. So first of all, we'll, um, put the gas at the flame. Keep it at the medium flame and take a saucepan like this. And then I'll let the pan to heat some time. And then I'll add some uh, clarified butter, which is also known as ghee in India. Is this something you make um, often or not really? Uh, not really, but uh, it's quite easy to make. So, um, Gatri, will you be make what kind of halwa will you be making today? Uh, I'm going to make kesar halwa today. Kesar as in saffron halwa. It's uh, quite delicious. Um, so what's your favorite type of halwa because there are like multiple types? Uh -huh. The one which I'm making today. Okay, great. Then I'll add some semolina flour. Semolina is a kind of, um, it's made out of wheat middlings. And then we'll stir it lightly so that it doesn't stick to the pan until it gets golden brown. Halva actually did not originate from India. It originated in uh, Persia, I guess, yeah. It's quite uh, famous in uh, South Asian countries. Well, most specifically in India. Just roast it until it gets um, golden brown. Not too brown because we don't want it to burn. Uh, one question. Uh, Indian traffic is always heavy. It seems like there's much going on. I'm sorry, what? The Indian traffic. Yeah, is... actually, um, it's quite a busy day today, so. Oh, okay. I'm sorry for the background noises. No, no problem. I was just curious. So as you can see, it's almost golden brown. I'll stir it a little bit more. Um, 
how long does it usually take to make? Like, what's the average? Was there different ways of making it? Yes. Oh, you was someone was speaking. Oh, sorry. Um, I was saying, like, how long does it usually take to make? Oh, it usually takes about uh, fifteen to twenty minutes. Uh, if you are doing it uh, correctly by procedure, though, uh, it might take a long uh, if you are doing for the first time. Okay, that's cool. So, as you can see, it's almost golden brown. I'll add some water to it. Be careful when you add water. At the same time, we we'll add some um, soaked kesar. You can see it. You can see it. When it's of this consistency, I'll add some sugar. And some dried fruits and as well as cardamom. So if you don't have cardamom, you can skip it. Gatri, Joan is asking if the dish, the dish is going to be sweet. Yeah, this is a sweet dish. It's quite aromatic right now. And, uh, I am sure you can't smell it. <laughs> you'll have to start it until it gets of a um, certain consistency it'll stick together And for the ratio of the um, semolina flour and the water, it should be one is to three. That is, if you're um, using one cup of semolina flour, then uh, three cups of water, so that it would be quite consistent and stick together. So Gayatri, what are certain other kinds of Indian desserts that you like to eat? Well, not Indian quite. I don't um, usually make Indian sweets. Though I tried helping my mother uh, the other day to make um, Rasmalai, 
and it was uh, it is made of um, milk and uh, also it's quite sweet that's really cool um So do you usually like to cook desserts more or do you like to cook savory stuff more or what do you like to cook? Well, I'm quite into baking. Um so Though I have cooked some savory stuff. So it's almost prepared. You can see it has gotten to quite a consistency of stickiness. So it's done. I'm gonna take a pan, sorry, a plate, and just serve it. guys it's done you can see this that's amazing great job thank you um if you could just like um, stand in front of your camera with your face and your dessert i would just like click a photo um, yeah one Great, done. Thank you so much. Uh, is it just for one person? I doubt one person, Raphael. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you have the guts and if you don't <laughs> drop down, please go ahead. Yeah, I just thought that was really big. That's why I'm asking. Thank you, Gaya. Thank you. Welcome. So I think that's it for today, right? I will just give you general updates. Uh, first of all, just I just want to thank you, Gatri and Kevin, for doing uh, the cook show today. It was great. Thank you very much. And as always, uh, I'm feeling hungry again. And in every session, I feel that way. So thank you for that. <laughs> and now I will give you the weekly updates, okay? So for uh, this week, you guys are supposed to finalize your section one, okay? Uh, it's supposed to be done by tomorrow. So make sure to do it. And next week, you will start the report section one, two. It's regarding the marketing section. Okay, 
uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, you guys can contact your coach and, and our senior coach, and I'll be assisted in uh, if you need anything, okay? Uh, next week, weekend, we will have our art event. So I hope you guys join us again, okay? So that's it. You guys have anything? Uh, there's any questions? Do you have anything to say? They just lay on. Emily? Everything no, okay? Yeah, all good for my yeah, yeah, all good my Okay. So that is for today's guys. Thank you very much. And I hope you got I hope to see you next weekend. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.